The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. If Christ is in you, say he's in me, and can come through you unhindered, you will live an extraordinary life. Once you're born again, your spirit is perfect. It's perfect. There are no spiritual defects. All the spirits of God's children are perfect. The Bible says God is the father of spirits. It's all perfect. It means you can't improve on it. That your spirit is as righteous as Jesus. You can't improve on it. And Satan can't get to it because it's sealed by the Holy Ghost. So now where's all the problem? And that's what we said the last time. We said the problem is the soul. It's the soul. If you're having any problems, that's because it's a problem with your soul. Now, what is the soul? Mind, will, emotions, intellect, imagination. The Bible says over in 2 Corinthians, I think it is, chapter 10, in verse 3, he talks here about Satan coming in at the soul level. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Satan uses spiritual forces to win. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through who? God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. What are those strongholds? Monuments that Satan has built in your mind. Strongholds. Casting down what? Imagination. See, all this has got to do with your soul. Nothing to do with your spirit. Your spirit is perfect and cries out to God, Abba, Father. So what I'm saying here is that we've now got to do something with our soul. He talks about over in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are what? Sanctified, sanctified. See, the inheritance comes through sanctification. Sanctified, sanctified, set apart to God. And when you and I get born again, look what he says over in Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. Now, he's talking about Paul. This is Paul's revelation. I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The body is neutral. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the, what? Renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Your spirit knows the perfect will of God, but it can't get through your, to your body until your soul gets sanctified. So sanctification is a process that you're going to find you end up repenting again, but not to be saved, but to get out of where you're at. You're going to discover, hey, I'm thinking wrong or so forth. Why? That's that sanctification process taking place. So I can't walk at a certain level day one. Peter said, oh, Lord, they may leave you, but I'm with you all the way, me and you, all the way to the throne. Well, they came and put a little pressure on Peter, and you saw what was in his soul. 
There was a monument in there. And anybody that says it's not, then you are being deceived. There's something you're always dealing with, trying to get it out. I'm not saying the same thing. I'm saying you overcome the same thing. But you, there's something else you discover. Wow, I don't have this right. Wow, I don't have so forth and so on. Say amen to that. And so God has to apply his grace, his mercy. Say amen to that. So basically your spirit is as pure and perfect and excellent as God. Your spirit, now don't, 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 watch out now, don't, 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 don't let your religious mind jump up and try to block me. Your spirit is as strong as God. Your spirit is as rich as God. You know, see, you turn to it, John chapter 10 and verse 30. I and my father are one. Now watch what religious people are going to do. Watch, watch what religious folk are going to do with this. Then the Jews took up stones again to what? Stone it. That's what religion will do when you say that you and God are one. If Christ is in you, say he's in me and can come through you unhindered, you will live an extraordinary life. Think about it. Christ is the Holy Ghost. That's God. God, the Holy Ghost, if he's in you and he said he is, well, how do you know, Pastor? Because he said he is. It's in the book. And if he's in you and he's got to come through you, he's coming through you and going to cause you if you let him come through your soul. See, the fence is in our soul. And if you let him come through your soul, then he will cause you to live an extraordinary life. Turn to Matthew chapter 14. The man that time came and said, hey, said, um, I went to get the gas and I pumped my gas. This is years ago. Went inside the pay. And the guy said, what pump do you have, sir? I said, pump number nine. He said, that'll be $36. The gentleman beside me was standing up. Now, this wasn't his money, his gas station, his car, his gas. It was nothing. He said, $36. I looked at him. He said, $36. I said, hold, hold on, bro. I said, uh, I, I got, I got this. I got it. And 36, this just bothered him. What happened? He saw himself in that place. Watch this. And in his imagination, it pulled him across his fence. All of us have fences. Now, how did you get in there? Through sin, things that happen to you. Oh, you know, them men ain't no good anyway. Things that happen to you, it built a monument. And that monument is designed to keep you in, out of your redemptive rights. You got fences. Maybe some have fences about their color. See, some of them have fences about their age. Some of them have fences about their, their uh, men or women. Or some have fences about this or that. It's what was done to you or what you've done or whatever have you. What did it do? It wounded your soul. And that soul is a path, that wound is a pathway that the devil goes in and out, in and out. That's why you can't trust folk without it. You got to learn to wait till God deals with them, wait till God heals them and so forth. Now you can trust them with the best. See, God, God knows he can put you in a place and you fail and you get all mad and so forth or leave the church or whatever. You shouldn't do that. That's pride. And the enemy takes pride and makes you so you won't forgive yourself. Right, right. That's good preaching. Yes, sir. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. See, there's one man, Adam. He sinned. That's what it says over in Romans chapter 5. The one man, Adam. Adam, you knew he was connected up because he named animals without going to school. Am I right about that? See, because in your spirit, you can be one with God. 
Say, I and my father are one. That you be one with God. And, but the problem is, is that soul level. And that soul level is, is, is got fences in it that won't let you out. And so we got to take the word. Jesus came to heal the broken what? Hearted. He came to heal this thing. And, 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 and we have to renew our minds. And that's what it says. Did I read uh, sec, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2? Did I read that one yet? Okay. Uh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of thy mind. What is it saying in the, in the uh, Amplified Translation? Fashioned after this were adapted to its external and superficial conditions. Religion makes you one dimensional. Religion keeps you in the in this three dimensional world. It won't let you get into fourth dimension. Religion won't let you get into a place where you can walk on water. Because 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 it's because it's 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 flesh. It, it's it's man trying to um, um, trying to make. Um, it, it's man not seeing himself one with God, mankind I'm talking about now. Now, I'm, I'm saying this because now if I can renew my mind, I can do extraordinary things. Now let's go to Matthew's gospel chapter 14. Because the Bible says, I'm going to prosper and what? Be in health. Keep going, keep going. As my soul, didn't it, didn't it say that? As my soul prospers. You see, I, I've got to heal this soul. And the healing comes through the cross and the blood, blood of Jesus. And it comes all through, through the anointing. All right? And that's part of what that anointing is for, to restore you. All right? Look what it says here in uh, Matthew 14, 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, on the sea, this is Jesus now, they were troubled, saying, it is a who? Spirit. And they cried out for what? Fear. Now, know what, see what fear does now. Fear keeps you in this one dimension. It keeps you, it locks you in. It won't let you escape it. Because to escape this dimension, you must escape time. And, and fear won't let you escape time. Fake time. When, when I was uh, uh, putting up the Joseph Business School, I told the Dolores and Ray, who helped me start it, I said, hey, um, help me start this school. I said, you come from the University of Chicago, you come from Harvard, you all got some of the finest MBAs and kinds of so forth, not that others are not. And I said, but help me start this. Said, hey, okay, all right. I said, now go and do some study and come back and tell me how long it'll take to start it. I gave them the criterion and so forth. So they go and check it out and they come back and say, it'll take one to two years. I said, let me pray about it. So I prayed about it. Now I'm getting in another frequency. I said, I'm getting into another frequency. And you have the mind of who? Christ. I'm getting into Christ's frequency. And all of a sudden he told me it'd take two months. Whoa. I go back to them. I said, hey, it's going to take two months to get it up. Oh, two months. Now they obeyed. They, they, they took it because I'm, I'm the pastor. And, and they took it. But my point to you is, is how much are we doing that we're doing without God. Watch this. And the enemy ends up delaying us, delaying us, delaying us. Come on, delaying us. Why? Because he's in that realm. And fear is what he's built his dominion on, along with money. But fear is that. So if I can get out of fear and get back over to faith, the first thing I discover about faith is faith is always now. Now, it has no time. So when I walk in the, 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 the consciousness of that I am a spirit, then all of a sudden, time, space, and matter, limitations go away. Boy, I'm preaching better you saying amen. All those limitations go away. They're gone. 
I remember a lady, I was in Virginia preaching. And I, after I finished preaching, God said, now, uh, uh, you know, call for souls. I call for souls. People came. And this one lady had an arm in a cast. I said, uh, after I finished uh, sinner's prayer, I said, now, you're born again. I said, now, what's wrong with your, your, uh, your uh, arm? She said, well, I broke it. Broke my wrist. So far. I said, well, you know, you've been redeemed from the curse. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh -huh, and so forth. I said, do you mind if I pray for your... Uh, for your, for your arm, a uh, uh, wrist. She said, no, I don't. So I put it on the cast and just prayed. Simple prayer now, prayed, all right? Then I took it off, I said, okay, now move your fingers. And she started moving her fingers, she couldn't do that at first, then she started crying. All right, now I said, how long did the doctor tell you that you have to have that on before it could be healed? She said six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it was. I said, well, God took eight seconds. He took eight minutes. You, you see, see, once you start operating in your spirit, you start walking on water. You can just step right out on it because that's where Adam was in the beginning, but he wasn't there. He be, when, he, when he sinned, he lost his mind. Most scientific studies says man is only now using about 10% of his mental ability. Be, well, what happened to the rest? <laughs> See? And, and, and my point to you is, is now in these last days, come on, in these last days, something's going to open that thing up. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm preaching back you saying amen. See, and, and this is going to be a part of the church becoming an attraction to the world. Is it making sense to you? All right, look at the scripture that we just started here. It was Matthew 14. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Now, didn't Jesus say the things that he did Shall we do also? That's John chapter 14, verse 12. Got it? And look at the next verse. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to thee on the water. That is not a normal thought. See? It's not a normal thought. Why? Because... He was tuned into another frequency. And the church should be there. We should be inventing all the time. We should come up with thoughts that the world has not thought. And as a result of that, well, look at the next, next verse. He said, bid me to come to thee on the water. And he said, come. Now, if it wasn't God's will for Peter to walk on the water, Jesus never would have said, come on, come. Am I right about it? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, what? Save me. Now God saved, the Lord saved him. But here's the deal. Did he walk? See, people be talking about, ah, you know, Peter sank. But he did walk. You have walked. I'm saying, if you know Christ in you, you will live an extraordinary life because you'll be on the level of God. There's nothing that can stop you. The only reason why Satan could shoot a fiery dart in our minds and to keep us from our inheritance, keep us from, from what we desire, and keep us from whatever healing, so forth, is because of our mind. The Bible says in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell. Come on. Even as your what? So prosperous. So when you're out to take the promised land, the promised land first has to be taken on the land of your soul. You have got to take it inside before you take it outside. 
And a lot of God's people don't work on the inside. They just think they want a car. They want to get out of debt and so forth. Well, work on the inside. Get you the word of God that promises you you'll be the lender and not the borrower that says, come and then once you do that, get that thing taken on the inside and then step out on the water. Now, wasn't that an encouraging message? Now, here's a point you want to remember. That people mention sanctified and sanctification. Well, sanctification is both an event and a process. In other words, once you get born again, immediately your spirit is sanctified. It's set apart for God. But the mind takes work. It takes renewing on a daily basis. Uh, event. You grow from a baby until one that now is an adult or full age and on strong meat and so forth like that. But that's that sanctification process. Yet born again, but still making some same mistakes. And then all of a sudden get more word in you and then you get more separated from the world. That's that process that you need. That's that whole act of being born again. Well, mentioning that, I have here some books in my hand. They're called Born Again and Spirit Phil. Now, I really wrote these books. We have it now in Spanish, and we have it also uh, in Polish, and have it in English as well. But these books I wrote because a lot of people are getting born again on this broadcast. And as a result of that, they want to know what the next step is. Well, let me ask you, have you been born again? Now, when I say that, I mean your spirit actually born again. Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except by me. Once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, a miracle happens. Something happens inside of us, and our spirits are reborn. Now, these spirits know God as our Father. The Bible uh, even talks about um, that we were away from God, that we didn't know God, that we were even enemies of God. But now, once you get born again, you and God become one again. And a lot of the things that have been harassing you or things that have been holding you back just fall off your life because of the born again experience. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to let you know that Jesus died for your sins. I don't care what you've done in your past. He died for that. He took whatever penalty was deserved for that sin. He took it upon himself. He became sin for us. And now the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So Jesus took that. But the gift of God is eternal life. So we can have the eternal life that God has for us. Why? He wants us all back. He's the father. He wants his children back. So we go out and preach the gospel, good news to every creature so that people can say yes to Jesus. Well, I want to ask you, have you ever said yes to Jesus publicly? You've, you've announced that he is in fact your new Lord. Once you do that, then you'll find that something miraculous happens. So what I want to do with you now, I want to pray with you. If you know that this is you I'm talking to, now I don't care how many times you went to church, <laughs> have you really received Christ? Because I had gone to church as a kid, but I really didn't know Christ. But as I got older, I gave my life to Christ and look at what God has done. He wants to do the same for you. So let's do this. If you know that that's you I'm talking to, let's pray. Bow your head with me. Say this after me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I don't care where you were when you made that confession, something has happened. Bible says anyone that's in Christ becomes a brand new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Something has just been become new in your life. Well, I have some books for you. This again will help you get that mind renewed, help you get that soul restored. 
This is called Born Again and Spirit Filled. Like I said, I have it in three, uh, Polish, uh, English, and Spanish. And you can just write us, call us, text us, whatever you need to do. Uh, just let me send you these out because it tells you what the next step is and being water baptized and filled with the Spirit of God and so forth. Oh, you're on the road to a new beginning. Praise the Lord. This is your day. Well, this is all we have for the day. This is Bill Winston saying we love you and keep walking by faith. It's time to leave behind the pain, conflicts, and drama of life that the enemy tries to use as wounds to gain access to your soul. God provides healing for your soul and it's yours to claim today. Dr. Bill Winston has prepared a masterful four-part teaching entitled Healing Your Wounded Soul that will allow you to heal your troubled heart and find peace in the storm. Heal the wounds of your past and understand the power that is within you is greater than any challenge you may face. With these four insightful messages, you will get the understanding you need to finally prosper by removing the fences that fear and unforgiveness have placed around your soul. This series can be yours today when you call 800-711-9327 or go online to billwinston.org. But wait, if you really want to experience the full manifestation of God's life-altering power, Dr. Winston is offering the chance to get the Transformation Bundle. In addition to the four-part message series, you will receive this best-selling book, Transform Your Thinking, Transform Your Life. The way you view the world around you directly influences the circumstances of your life. If you want to be happy, whole, and healthy, then it begins with correcting your thought process. With this enlightening book, you will learn the secrets to mastering your thoughts and how to use them to create the life you've always wanted. This collection will help you move God's Word from information to revelation. Call us now at 800-711-9327 or go online to billwinston.org and get this must-have bundle today. Christ has promised you life more abundantly. Let Him come through you unhindered so you can live the extraordinary life He has waiting for you. Start your process of healing today. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.